I do, and I still wonder what keeps me going on and on. And, and do you realize also that your music is still today? You well, know, you, that I know. Do you realize sure. that, that there, no, no party can be held no. without, <laughs> without a Freddie Mercury <laughs> being played, right? And without a few Freddie Mercury being played, right? I know that for sure, and I can tell you this. Because um, if you look at my catalog, you know, I have a long catalog. I have so much material yes. uh, over the years, and um, they're still popular in different countries across the world. So there's still a demand for us to tour. I mean, we just completed um, two weeks. We were out early in the year. We're continuing. And it just goes on and on because people want the music. How are they going to get it? Yes. If they book the artist. Because yes. he's here. He's alive. He's well. He's working. I, I, I wrote a little piece on you on Facebook the other day. It went with Africa. Yes. And, and this, I, I left out. I only put Los Angeles, UCLA Jazz Festival. And then I moved to, to North Carolina. And that's all right. So I got, um, I got jacked up because the person says I didn't put that you played at the dub club. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. So yes. yeah. you're, you're still highly loved. Yeah, we might agree. Highly appreciated. Yeah, man. People love our music to death. When we go out there and perform, which is what keeps us going, you know? When you go out there and see how people really crave for the music, you're like, she's, um, um, where did I make these songs? Because the demand is on us to, yes. to, to do them, and at night time people just request all kind of songs from way back then, yes. and we just do them. Do you remember, do you remember that people. album you did um, with Dance Crasher? And, oh yes, oh that's my God, that's, Jamaican classics. Yes, it's a, you Jamaican <laughs> classics. Probably, I, I, I really believe, to me, that's the best album that you've ever done in your life. Well, personally, a lot, a lot of people, a lot of people share the same sentiment, yes. but I'll give you a story on that. When I came up with the Jamaican classics, because I have three volumes of it, and the reason was the music was going through a real slump mm -hmm. at that time. And I was thinking, um, how can we break through this barrier? Um, sometimes if you produce your great album, it could get lost yes. in between all of what is happening at the time. Absolutely. Because um, back then it was when the music started to drift out of context. Ah. And we were struggling more or less to find that kind of direction thing and I'm like you write a good song and put it out it's going to get lost somewhere there because that's not that's not the mindset of what's happening right now but how about if I do some classy Jamaican songs and compile them on one album maybe that could work you know that could teach the younger youth them where the music is also coming from and it worked perfectly because Japan when that album came out in Japan it was like a school curriculum for the Japanese. Yes, because they teach you. A lot of them thought those were original songs and a lot of them did research and found out that no, Alton had done, let him try. Yes. Oh, um, yes. Aria did sing, yes. I was born a loser, but him said, I was born a winner. Mm -hmm. And people start getting into it like that. So um, there was a demand to do a volume two. Uh, and I did that. And so um, we did a volume three also. When I look at Sister Marcia's new album, I, as a matter of fact, last night I was online and looking at the album. Beautiful picture. I, I, I love the concept of her new, yes. new album. And I love the album because I hear some real wicked tunes on it. And it just reminds me back of, of the Jamaican yes, classics. Yes, yeah. I should pick some bad, bad tunes for the album. <laughs> and so I think that album is a stamp, I'd say. It's going to be around for a while. Well, before, you know, you know the thing is, reggae music came through um, a whole um, change of uh, evolving mm -hmm. kind of thing, right? Because we, we started with mental. Yes. We went into ska. Mm -hmm. we went yeah, into I think rock there was thing. like blue beat. Blue beat. Right in in. Uh, oh, in the, the middle of that. Yes, yes, uh, yes. yes. Right, like right. And then when it came into the early seventies, and we started this this lovers rock thing, mm -hmm. it's it started to split off, right? Yes. Because we yes. started to see the roots and culture coming of in course. and. Then the lovers rock and the dance all mm -hmm. started up. There. Started up. Yeah, so um, I, I, you have been through all of this. All, all, all those <laughs> genres. It's amazing, isn't it's it? It's amazing, isn't it? Yeah, I've been there and I'm thankful. I'm thankful. Um, nothing personal. I, I, I didn't try to be there or see it here. I just started doing what I do and I'm here today doing it just the same. I'm so so your involved in music right now, is, a, is it the love for the music? It or is, is it, it is. It okay, is. so there's no... Um, I remember doing one job outside of music. One job. And it was one summer. My stepfather used to work at Monimus Sugar Factory and at Yarmouth. And um, it was summer and he got me a summer job. And that job was to use a hose and fold them drums with molasses. Mm. That's the one real job outside of music. I 
that I've ever experienced. Um, and my goal in music was to help my parents still, because where we come from, not Clarendon, coming like Africa, when we go Africa, dirt floor, work like dab, kitchen, and all of them things. There is coconut bow and sweep your floor, huh? it was yeah. like crying, but that's how we grew up. Oh, so this. I wanted to leave and go to Kingston to see if I could um, find a way in music for help my parents, and that's so what you, I did. Did you stay in touch with mom, mom and dad? Yeah, all right, right, right. Well, well, not dad, but mom, because mm -hmm. I never grew with my father, I grew with my mom still. But mom would come to Kingston every so often, check up on me, because her dad would always give her money to go back home and, you know, and ensure her that I was fine and stuff and thing. And so that went on, but my goal in the back of my head was to help my mother, because I never see any way out or over to go happen. That's nice. Uh, what's what's it now? For what 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 what's the future lies? What what does the future lie for you? What's in the future for, for you? me personally? I think um, I just continue to tour for a while until my body can't manage it anymore, and um, continue to make records. Cause if I stop doing that now, what what do I do? I'm going to be the most bored person on the face of the earth. Um, so I'll continue to do what I do, and um, I plan to put out a series. Because we have a bunch of materials in the studio, that's the greatest part. Um, just before the arrival of Stephen, the genius, my son, uh, we were recording on 24 track tapes. Mm -hmm. So I have a pile of material that is untouched and unreleased. Wow. Because when Stephen came, it was in the age of digital. And so they were recording digitally, we were still recording analog. <laughs> yes. So they have not gone back to those teeth, the transition, the, transition, the, yes. the product. Mm -hmm. So we have them there. It's just a question of time because it needs a lot of time to go back through those material mm -hmm. to actually pick and transfer to compile. But we're compiling a series called Big Ship Gold. And, and, and those are the materials we're going to be compiling from. Other than that, we'll still produce artists because talent is something I love. And when you hear real talent, I really get excited and would love to produce them. So those are the things I see for the future. And when they are great talents, man, it, it excites us to try and work with them. One last question in this. In, this, um, in America, we have a, a, a string, and most foreign countries, there's a structure in, in the music as, as to how uh, persons are paid mm -hmm. for their, you know, um, their, for their work. Their work. And, 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 and also to, 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 to kind of control how music is distributed mm -hmm. and, and all that. Is that, is that, do we have that kind of structure in Jamaica? Um, not in Jamaica. If you notice, Jamaica is, uh, Jamaica is one of the worst places on the face of the earth when it comes to music, selling music. Um, to create music, we do that more than most places on the face of the earth. In Jamaica, we produce, I would think we produce probably 50 songs per day um, for a small island, that's a lot. Right? right per day yes, right. Um, because everybody have laptop everybody have computer everybody think they must produce everybody can use one finger and just make up a thing and you call it really oh. that's why we have this problem with this hip-hop thing here you don't have producers like cleavy silly and cleavy would sit down conceptualize something smart and create it mm -hmm. create it and, and make it be a success everybody come now and think they're hip-hop stars and and you know, Mm -hmm. <laughs> Cough like Jay Z, some hip hop beat, and I call it really. It's really disgusting. I find it disgusting because the first thing these youths need to understand they are not Americans, they are Jamaicans. All of them, too, when you see them do interview and them do um, like, like a commercial, everybody have moved them on like them are Yankee. <laughs> Yo, man, like, yes. Yankee, kind of, Yankee, kind of, yes. Yankee. Where we get that from? Are we not Jamaican anymore? Right. Come on, man, and get serious, man. The end of this month is a concert that's coming up. Uh, in Laura Hill, mm -hmm. what what's what's your um, foresight on that? What what, what do you well, think? Um, I haven't performed in this community for a long time, and basically because when you're affiliated with a community, you don't want to overplay yourself in here. Right. So we stay out of the community. Mm -hmm. We tour everywhere else, leave Florida. What was the last concert I done here? It's about four years. I can't remember even. Okay, okay. okay. that's all. Other than yeah. Jerkfest. Jerk face. <laughs> Jerk face. Thank you so much. Earlier on. Jerk face. But I, I make it a duty not to perform a lot in my community. Because yeah. you want to stay relevant yes. for as long as you can. Yeah. So when, when we were approached about this event, I thought this would be a great event. And I thought, um, why not Sister Marcia? Yeah. Uh, because that's a combination I love. I love working with Sister Marcia. I still see Sister Marcia as the truest champion, female wise, for our industry. If you look at Marcia's life and music, where she's coming from and where she's today. She and I, we share basically the same struggles and the same everything. 
and we fought our way through to be here today. Yes, it, it, it's not easy. It's not an easy road. Like and and especially for a woman in that uh, time, right? In that worse, time. yes. Mm -hmm. And she managed to hold out and managed to keep relevant and managed to still continue to make some of the most beautiful music with the most beautiful voice. And so she has to be commended big time. And so I was really happy that she and I was doing this concert. And that's going to be magical, I can tell you. Anybody miss this concert? It's going to be one of the best reggae concerts in South Florida for a long time. Oh my God. So I would urge everyone to come out and make sure you'll be a part of that event. That's so nice to hear. As I'm looking, I'm really looking forward to that concert too. I'm going to wrap up, but uh, yeah, yes. I want you to tell, tell, um, tell them to, to come out. Yes, well, we're urging everyone to come out. The date is June 29th. And guess what? You can't, you can't even call it my birthday concert. Because my birthday is on the 27th. Oh. So you know what you can do for me now as a real fan now? Let's get me like a birthday gift come. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, seriously. Just carry my birthday card, everything, everything we have for me. Just bring come the 29th. The 27th is the birthday, the 29th is the concert. Just bring all the birthday love him come. The one thing I, the one thing I ask you for is to remember to bring this song with you. Um, Rastaman of the key to the city. Yes, I will. And we'll make sure we do that bring. song every night. All right, we we'll perform that song we'll every night. Make sure night. you bring that one. <laughs> <laughs> just make sure. And, and also, we have two very special songs that Sister Marcy and I are going to do, ah. and they are going to be mind blowing. I won't give them away. <laughs> no, trust me. I love working with Sister Marcy. It's a good combination, one of the greatest combination, and yes. I think in terms of enjoyment and enjoying a great concert, yes. that's the evening for it, okay. June 29. Well, listen, it's been. Uh, this is not just a pleasure. <laughs> this has been educative. <laughs> this has been informative. This is really a great pleasure yes, to, be, to be here with you. Thank I you so much. Me too. All right. Thank you. All right. Very, very yes, much. Yes. <laughs> Heated. Five, four, three, two, two one.